Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial byte for Oxygen Not Included, which is all about storage. This will cover how to store all three states of matter in the game, solids, liquids and gases, as well as infinite storage. I'm going to start off with solids, as these are the easiest to store, as they take the form of debris. The first way to store debris is using storage bins, and these can store 20 tonnes each. Note that you must select the filters on the bin for what you want to store, and if you use a bin without the sweep only option, dupes will automatically collect resources without a sweep command. Using sweep only will ensure that only material with a sweep command is collected. Although this is better than having debris lie on the floor, they are very space inefficient and provide a significant decor penalty. Overall, the optimal way to store debris is to simply empty it onto a single tile, and you can use the automatic dispensers to do this. I typically use a pair and set them to sweep only with all resources. This way, Anything that is swept ends up here. Also note that they do not actually require a power input to function in this way. Doing this not only improves the space efficiency and average decor, but it also helps game performance as there is significantly less for the game to calculate, especially with heat transfer. If you want to take this a step further, you can use a two tile high pit, which means your dupes don't see the decor penalty from the debris. It's also possible to use a little bit of liquid to prevent off gassing. Liquids and gases are a bit trickier to store, and this can be done either in reservoir buildings or on the map. Of course, liquids will form pools and you can build tanks to collect them. The mass per tile depends on the liquid, but all types of water collect at 1000 kilos per tile, and oil at 870 kilos a tile. Beware that as the height of the tank increases, so does the mass of the tiles at the bottom. When this gets too much, it can cause pressure damage and eventually failure. A useful way to prevent this is to use airflow tiles or locked airlock doors, as these can withstand any liquid pressure. Gases need to be pumped into closed rooms, and the maximum pressure will depend on which vent you use. The normal vent overpressurizes at 2 kilos a tile, and the high pressure vent at 20 kilos a tile. The liquid reservoir takes 6 tiles of space and stores 5 tonnes of liquid, which is slightly less efficient than just using the tiles, at least for water. The gas reservoir takes 15 tiles and stores 150 kilos of gas, which is half as efficient as a high pressure room. Of course, reservoir buildings can be built inside storage tanks or rooms to increase capacity, but beware that these buildings overheat and must be kept within their temperature range. Remember to build pumps into the storage areas to be able to get the resources back out, and ensure these have a suitable overheat temperature also. I would recommend using insulated tiles to minimise heat transfer. As you can see from these normal storage methods, they require a lot of space, and this is especially true for gases. Fortunately, there are ways to increase the mass per tile, and these are commonly referred to as infinite storage. I should mention at this point that some people consider these exploits, as they rely on some slightly strange behaviours of the tile mechanics. Personally, I don't have any issues with these, as they are included in the game, but of course it's up to you whether you use them or not. Remember for all of these designs, to include pumps to retrieve the liquids and gases out, and be sure they won't overheat by carefully choosing the material you build these from. Infinite liquid storage can be achieved in a couple of ways, and the first I'm going to cover is using a small packet of a different liquid. As you can see in this tank, all of the tiles of water except for one tile have polluted water, which is heavier than water. Because the tank is closed, the polluted water cannot move and is not a full tile, so it won't overpressure the output vent. This means we can continue to fill it with water as much as we like. Airflow tiles, or locked airlock doors, are required in this design, as the liquid pressure will obviously get very high, very quickly. Next method is known as the Escher waterfall, because liquid can endlessly fall into the storage area. To set this up, it's easiest to start by filling the storage area and input area with the liquid you want to store. Then, you need to make two tiles of different gases on these critical tiles. Note that the gases should be in order of density, so here I'm using oxygen on the top and carbon dioxide on the bottom. A tip is to build gas lines with a bridge input and then deconstruct the pipe segment with the gas in, as I'm going to demonstrate in debug mode. Once set up, you can now store as much liquid as you want by simply placing it in the entranceway. And finally, you can also use a series of doors to push liquid in and compress it. There are multiple ways to set this up with automation, but this is the one that I use, which I know works reliably. I'm annotating the screen here to show what the timings are for each of the buffer and filter gates, but feel free to copy this design for use in your own bases. Note that the mechanised airlocks are unpowered. This design can also be used to delete materials if you block off the end, or simply as a material pump 
which I will cover in another tutorial bite. Gases can also be compressed using this design and this is one of the two ways I will show you how to do infinite gas storage. Here is a quick demonstration, but of course it works in exactly the same way, for gases. The other method uses a similar trick to the liquid storage and again here we can use a liquid to prevent a gas from overpressuring. As shown, spill a little bit of liquid onto the floor and put the gas vent in it. The normal gas vent will still overpressure at 2 kg per tile, so you need to carefully control this or use the high pressure vent which should go up to 20 kg. It's also important to ensure the liquid has at least two tiles to sit on. If it's only one wide then the liquid will simply be deleted. You can see this clearly in the materials overlay. Lastly, carefully consider the temperature ranges of the gas and liquids you plan to use to ensure the liquid doesn't freeze or evaporate. So that wraps up this tutorial bite about storage in oxygen not included. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.